everyone. Thank you for being here. I know this is a crazy day. It's in our, it's in our uh, final, potentially final day of session, and I know we've got over 40 stuff to be on, so I know we've got members running back and forth. But um, I'm, I'm pleased that you came today uh, for a very important issue. Uh, my name is State Representative Alicia Reese, and I'm president of the Ohio Legislative Black Caucus. Uh, we are joined by Black Caucus. Some of our Black Caucus members, some are in committee and will be joining us. But we're also joined by NAACP, um, NAACP, one of the chairs for our state, uh, Larry Price. And we're joined by, I'll introduce the members that are here, Representative Moody Sykes, uh, Senator Charlita Tavares, we'll hear from both of them in a moment, uh, Senator Cecil Thomas, Senator Edna Brown, who is the first vice chair of uh, OLBC, Representative Herschel Craig, who is second vice president, uh, Representative Michael Ashford, uh, Sergeant at Arms, Representative uh, Jack Sarah, who is in leadership of the Democratic Caucus, Representative uh, Dan Ramos, and uh, Representative Kevin Boyce, who is also a member of the Ohio Legislative Black Caucus. And I also want to say Representative Dan Ramos represent our uh, Latino Caucus as well. Uh, thank you for being here today. The Ohio Legislative Black Caucus has been on uh, the front lines of so many critical issues affecting 1.5 African Americans in the state of Ohio. Uh, we have been here uh, in this legislative body and have been uh, in the super minority, uh, but has, have been able to get some things accomplished as it relates to minority business uh, for the first time ever in history. Uh, over $228 million for minority businesses because of the law that the Black Caucus got implemented in 1980. Uh, we've been able to move forward and we continue to fight for criminal justice reform. Uh, and we're asking for comprehensive approaches for, uh, for criminal justice. And we've got several bills that are pending and hopefully we'll move forward in this uh, General Assembly. But today as we look at the 40 bills and have votes on them, whether it's uh, um, voting on uh, voting online, whether it's uh, uh, medical marijuana, and all these different things that we're moving forward and we're running through these halls. One of the things that we found as we traveled the state with our town hall meeting and got out of the state house but went to people's homes and had town hall meetings and find out what their concerns were, it was brought to our attention at a town hall meeting in Cincinnati, Ohio. They said, these issues are great, but what are you going to do about the exception for slavery in the Ohio Constitution? And so all of us reacted and said, wait a minute, what are you talking about? And we came back and we started looking through the Constitution. And we know that when the Constitution was originally written, African Americans did not participate in helping to write and shape the Constitution. But as we look at the Constitution and where it should go, it should be more inclusive and up to date with the times. And we're sad to stand here today that in 2016, the state of Ohio, in our Constitution today, has exception for slavery in our Constitution. Representative Sykes will talk more in detail and Senator Tavares about that language. Senator Tavares is a uh, one of the chairs, co-chairs of our Constitution Modernization Commission. <coughs> Representative Sykes sits on the Constitution Modernization Commission. And we appreciate the work of the Constitution Modernization Commission who has, I believe, up to 2020 uh, or so to get recommendations. But the citizens of Ohio cannot wait until 2020. They can't wait to 2017, 2018. We need to correct that right now. Too many people that are in our prison systems and representative voices fighting right now to make sure that those who are in the prison systems are treated like citizens, even though they have committed the crime, they're doing their time, but should not be treated as animals. And so when you look at this exception in the Constitution, it has an exception that could apply to human trafficking. It has an exception that could apply to those who are in the prison systems. And so whether you're in the prison system doing your time or whether you're out and, and, and being um, attacked for human trafficking, we believe that slavery, we should have a clear message in Ohio that slavery is not allowed. It's not allowed, it's abolished, it's not permissible in 2016 without exception. 
And so our message today is slavery must go, and it must go now. And we would hope that this General Assembly would move with the speed that we've been moving through MBRs and things that get one hearing and move fast between the Senate and the House to put this forward so that we can stand united and say in 2016, no one in Ohio, no one in Ohio could possibly be treated as a slave. And so this is the message that we have today. We'll be sitting down with that, we're meeting with the governor, sitting down with the Speaker of the House and the President of the Senate, but this shouldn't be something that we have to do a lot of negotiating and a lot of explaining. We think it's very clear, we think it's very simple, and we think that the message is very uh, appropriate for the times. We will be having our statewide convention on July 15th through the 17th in Cincinnati, the Ohio Legislative Black Caucus. It'll be right before the National NAACP National Convention. We've made them aware now of this slavery piece in our Ohio Constitution. And we hope that by that time, we can have a report to the National NAACP Convention and to the citizens of Ohio at our Black Caucus Convention on July 15th through the 17th that we've been able to assure that slavery is out of the Ohio Constitution. At this time, I'd like to turn